Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today, before we start off with the scenario, make sure that if you have a scenario of your own, you submit that through the link down below in the description. Everything's filled out there, type of ship I designed, the story behind it, what sort of enemies I'm fighting, all of it and more on the form. Link down below in the description. Today's scenario is sent in by Darcy C and it is very clever. Accidental Land Lease is the title. After a series of unfortunate mistakes, the HMS Lion's radar, fire control systems and much of the ammo was shipped to Russia, along with various land lease war supplies. Upon realizing this, the Russians not only apologize, but have a proposal. It would be much safer if the new battleship simply escorted a convoy to one of their ports, so the Russians can simply finalize the ship without having to risk the valuable material being sunk in transit should the return convoy be attacked. But, along the way, a storm separates HMS Lion from the convoy with only one destroyer at her side. The Russians, upon seeing a capital ship in the vague vicinity of a convoy route, fall into a panicked fervor. The true stories of Germany sending out questionably large ships with woefully, woefully inadequate support to attend convoys begins to rampantly circulate. The Tirpitz comes to many confused minds who probably don't even know what Tirpitz looks like or where she actually is. You now have to defend yourself against an onslaught of confused Russian Navy vessels, desperate to destroy a misidentified ship that they think is on the prowl. Realistically, they are still your allies. And this is where the spin comes into this scenario. Because I cannot sink any enemies. I have to survive for what I think is an hour. Uh, it wasn't mentioned in the description, but I think it is an hour. If I manage to survive for an hour, um, then that's half of the conditions, because I also need to score 40 points. Now, I, need, I can score f uh, 10 points for each ship that's damaged below half health, but that is left alive to be repaired or recovered. So if I can damage and sort of incapacitate the uh, Russian light cruisers, heavy cruisers and or destroyers, then I actually gain points, but only if they're damaged below half health. So I'm going to say below half structural integrity. I lose five points for sinking cruisers. Destroyers incur no penalty if they are sunk. So I can sink their destroyers and I might have to do that because a battleship against enemy torpedoes is usually not a good idea. Now, since the Alliance fire control systems and radar and part of her ammunition have been shipped on the convoy, I can only have a rudimentary fire control system, I cannot have radar, and I can only have reduced ammo. He also says it doesn't actually have to be designed like HMS Lion, but it's still limited to maximum primary armament of 15 inch guns to represent the real world circumstances of HMS Lion. Now, I had a bit of a look at the Lion and what I'm finding, the uh, Lion-class battleship from 1939, she had 16-inch guns, triple 16-inch, but at the request of the creator of the scenario, I'm going to limit it to 15-inch guns. Which could steal them, because I have large guns and they have light cruisers, and that generally works out pretty poorly for them because I can only damage them, and normally 15-inch guns which have absolutely no problem with sinking a ship like a light cruiser. But I have a problem with sinking a ship like a light cruiser. I lose points if I sink a light cruiser. Or a heavy cruiser, for that matter. I'm trying to get 46, 400, there we go. Okay, she could do 30 knots. She has a high range, long range, many bulkheads, skier turbines, I think. Uh, drum boilers, yeah, four times steam turbine sets. So let's say gear turbines. Oil, forced boilers, um, auxiliary diesel, and an advanced propeller shaft. Krupp to three, because I'm 1935, I'm not 1940, so I'm gonna artificially limit that. Some barbette armor, uh, relatively high anti-torpedo bulge, increased bulkheads, reinforced bulkheads, two anti-flooding maximum, 
to honor the British tradition of keeping their ships alive at all costs. And now we get to the interesting part. I can only have, according to the scenario, a mid-tier, sorry, low to mid-tier coincidence rangefinder. So let's say coincidence rangefinder 3. It's going to give me a bit more aiming speed, but gun base accuracy is going to be pretty dreadful. Um, let's see, what's the starting? Yeah, starting range is 14,000, so that should be fine. How do I keep other ships alive? What am I going to do to keep other ships alive? I'm going to have to jiggle with quite a lot of components. Because I'm going to have to turn my main guns on and off. To, to deal damage, but not critical damage. The other thing is, though, he says, you cannot turn weapons off to wait out the clock if you theoretically acquire the points to win. You must keep defending yourself. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. I have some ideas on how to work that. But whether they're going to be theoretically or practically useful, that remains to be seen. Just trying to balance out the ship a little. Full weight offset still relatively high. Oop. There. Alright, how many funnels did Lion have? Two. Really? You're going to be like that about it? Hmm? Come again? I cannot put a funnel on the deck? What? Okay. Normally you can just put a funnel on the deck whenever you like, but... Not so much. Right, and secondary armament, eight twin, 5.25 inch guns. One, two, three, four. I'm going to get very, very, very close to my displacement, so I'm gonna have to upgrade to group four. That saves me quite a bit. Other armaments, uh, not really. She had two pounder guns. Anti-air, so I'm not really going to feature those. Aside from that... Armor. Uh, belt armor, 6 to 14.7 inches. So let's say belt extended is 6 inch. Uh, main armor belt is... Four, oh, I have 110% armor quality. Well, so do they. Screw it. Uh, deck armor, 2.5 to 6 inch. Conning tower armor was three to four and a half inch. Did that commander have a death wish or something? Turrets, seven to 15 inch. I'm gonna stick to that upper limit and say it was 15 inch. And the bulkheads, four to 12 inch. So um, that's the reinforced bulkheads too and the maximum amount of bulkheads. Now, I'm not sure if the ship had acoustics. I'm going to assume not which is going to give those Russian torpedo units a pretty good chance. Whether those torpedoes are mounted on DDs, cruisers, or a heavy cruiser, now that remains to be seen. Now, propellant. Uh, let's go with cordite for a change. I still have some displacement left, and that's mostly intentional. I don't mind that. Let's see if I can get this weight offset gone. 0.4%. That's something I'm happy to accept. And this is the, not the Royal Sovereign, this is the Lion. Okay. Try not to sink the enemy warships. That's a new one. Try not to sink the enemy warships. We're apparently placing a Dreadnought funnel on the Lion. Report. Russian cruisers on the offensive. They're all here. 
Light cruisers, please don't have torpedoes. One torpedo tube. That I know of. If it's just the one, I don't mind it. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, five light cruisers, I think. My DD. Tasmania. I can't... Well... I have to defend myself, but I cannot use my torpedoes. If I use my torpedoes, I'm going to be in trouble. Just... I don't know. HE blast them? And see if I can survive for an hour without getting torn to shreds. Let's see, Tasmania, what sort of armament do you have? You got four inch guns. Reloads quickly. You got a bunch of three inch and a three inch. Okay, this is gonna make her very nice as an interceptor against enemy destroyers. That's very comfortable. Would you be the heavy cruiser by any chance? Yeah, she has triple torpedo tubes over there. Very well. I don't really think that I'm going to be hitting any of these ships anytime soon. Let's try for the light... Oh, sorry, for the heavy cruiser. I want you to just follow, not screen. Follow. Oh, so I need to mutilate to half health four ships. That's the challenge. Mutilate, but not kill. This is going to be a very ch very t challenging one. Very rough indeed. Are you concealed behind smoke? No, you're not. Okay. Uh, get the five inch against that ship. I do consider this to be a quite risky venture as those light cruisers are apparently very eager to charge in for some reason or another. Oh, hold on. If I can make the use of the five inch guns and make sure that the five inch guns damage but not kill a light cruiser, then I can have the main guns on the target that I'm least likely to hit. If that makes sense. Because I'm trying not to hit it. Why are you charging me down? I lose five points for sinking a cruiser. I don't want to kill you, but if you keep closing in, I will. Uh, that's the main target. That DD somewhere far in the back. Alright, we are looking at the light cruiser Almaz. Six inch guns. Fairly rapid firing at 9.3 seconds. And one port and starboard torpedo tube. Range... 12.7 kilometers. Uh, I need you to target this one. Damn, those guns are inaccurate. We have damaged... No, we have not damaged the enemy at all. We've taken some damage. Oh, crap. One thing I forgot was the reduced ammo. Oh, well. At this rate, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Now, if I understand the scenario correctly, then if I don't sink any... Sorry, if I don't actually mutilate any of the cruisers, I will not get any points after an hour. So that's going to make it even more pressing for me to actually do damage. 77% chance to pen. If I go for a high explosive shell... Whoa! That was a torpedo. If I go for a high explosive shell, I might be able to immediately eradicate a light cruiser, and that's not the plan. So, arguably, it might be better to go for armor piercing. So I can still do damage, but I over-penetrate the ship. Shell flies in one side, shell flies out the other side, without actually doing a lot of damage. <laughs> We're still trying to hit a DD with the main guns inside of a smoke screen. Yeah, right. Now, 
I'm gonna have to get a little creative and quite literal with the rules of the scenario. He says you cannot turn the guns off and wait at the clock if you acquire the points. But what I can do is adjust to save gun ammo. Only target, only fire at targets when I think that I have a high probability to hit. Which, with a shitty rainfinder like the one I have now, I don't think that that's particularly likely at all. And then the meanwhile, Lion just continues to throw out warning shots. Tasmania, do you have hydro? Sonar 2, good. Torpedo in the water. Turning circle, 660 meters. Where's that torp? The hell? Here. This is it. <laughs> we keep pecking away at the light cruiser, the Almaz, but it really hasn't done much damage. So that's good, I guess, in a way. Lion's turning around, training all her main guns on the light cruiser. Point four. Oh. oh, hold on. How much do you carry? Five torpedoes. Really? I need to bait out all the torpedoes. If those torpedoes get launched, like the ones from the Almaz, and they don't actually hit, then the, the light cruisers become pretty toothless. Because they can- oh. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know you're an ally, but you keep shooting me. Oh no. This is one of those cases where I actually hope the enemy has a bunch of damage control. Well, she seems to be surviving it as of right now. Lion turned back out. Okay. The Almaz is in a pretty bad shape. And she's limping away. Good. I want to keep the secondary guns on the Almaz because she's still at 55% and not less. Torpedo in the water. Looks like the Abrek has also launched another torpedo at me. We need to get you a little bit below 55. Preferably without actually causing flooding. The moment I start causing flooding, that ship goes down. She gets hit by a 15 inch shell again, she's dead. Torpedo in the water. Lion, rudder to starboard again. We're going to keep zigzagging. There's another torp. One and a half percent chance to hit. Hold on. That light cruiser that I just decimated. It was a penetrating hit. Bow deck extended penetration. So that was the AP shell and it didn't actually overpen. It did full on damage. Torps in the water. Tasmania turned starboard. We're four and a half clicks out. Now I might consider the destroyers my biggest threat because the cruisers only launch a few torpedoes at a time. The destroyers actually launch salvos. So I'm gonna have to try and squeeze between here. Tasmania is gonna have to zigzag a little to avoid the torpedo. Very good. There's another salvo there. Lionheart starboard. The primary target is the light cruiser here. Fuck me. Another salvo. Hard to port. Tasmania. Try to peck away at the light cruiser with the four inch guns. Penetration 40%? With a four inch gun? You are kidding me. The Tasmania 
has a 50-50 chance to penetrate a light cruiser. I'm not sure if that's impressive or scary. Uh, Lionheart to starboard. We're gonna have to zigzag here. Oh fuck, there's more to zig and to zag. How's that light cruiser doing? Almost 54% structural. I'm probably gonna eat that torpedo. There's just too many of them. In normal situations, I would just flat out launch a salvo of torpedoes into this formation and see what happens. And I would probably get away with it. So I would probably be able to just launch a volley and land one or two. But in this situation, I would probably kill off a light cruiser. They have anti flood one, but the light cruiser does not come with a torpedo blister. These are 20 inch torpedoes. Shit, she just launched another salvo. Lion, hard to port. At least this destroyer is going down. Oh god, that's going to be a difficult one to avoid. If at all. Lion first with a big salvo, this time aimed at the Abrek. Hits. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're not supposed to go down, but then again, a light cruiser penetration hit. High explosive. Yeah, so that's a minus five so far. Lion's gonna get torped three times? Shit. And all because of a massive misunderstanding. Uh, are you guys still reloading? We got torps here, here, here. This is why I gave this line torpedo blisters, because I know that this is gonna happen. Where's the DD? Jeez, you're perfectly fine. Rhodes loves is on fire. Oh no. Rudder's damaged. Not very helpful. Tasmania is still speeding along at 41 knots. And seemingly impervious to enemy weapons fire so far. Now they have three DDs. If I neutralize all of those, that's going to make my life quite a bit safer. Especially the life of the lion. Which isn't doing too well. And since DDs don't incur any penalties, I want to get rid of these guys. We're still firing the secondaries at this one, and the other DD is fighting this one, the Rodislav. It's time to turn back. Once my smoke ends in about 70 seconds, the light cruisers are going to have a feast on this uh, DD over here. Did I eat another one? No, I did not. They passed by. That one is avoided. That one's avoided. Line continues to turn. Oh, I don't want to hit the Rinda. Well, sort of yes, sort of no. At this range, I have a 100% chance to pen near enough. She has a maximum armor of 2.9 plus 90%, so about, let's say, 4. 4.5. This is going to cut through at 2.5 kilometers. 36 inches of armor. So I'm hoping I'll fly in my shells on the one side and fly out the other. Or just not hit at all. That's uh, option bravo. We are 5% locked on target. 3%. 1%. 2%. 
Need to kill this DD before it reloads. Interestingly, it's not even targeting the guns at the battleship. She's not trying to hit the line of their main guns. She's just trying to hit the Tasmania. Rodislav, don't give me any points if they survive. Oh, fire. Flooding on this DD. The 5 inch guns now really get to work away on it. 39% chance to hit. Because this DD is in the way between the Rinda and my battleship. I'm not expecting the Rinda. Or anybody else, for that matter, over there to launch torpedoes at me. Oh, hello. Didn't see you there. Please finish this DD. It's about to reload its quintuples. Sorry, quadruple. The four uh, tubes. Rinda is turning away. Accuracy does look good, though. About 5%. Okay, that's the DD gone. Next target, Rodislav. Tasmania is still pecking away. So far successfully, without really taking that much damage in return. She's been hit a few times by 6-inch shells. But they mostly didn't do any damage. Or not anything severe. Right, so as it stands, I'm at a minus five points for this scenario. Lion, you're free to hit? Nope, not at all. The Stroini is still over here. Seemingly with a full complement of torpedoes. Not really any willingness to, to, to use them. Target the mains on the Terek. So it's just the stern battery and the bow is going to have to switch all the way over. Unless I turn to starboard again. Yeah, let's do that. Let's turn to starboard. Rodislav continues to take damage. This is going to be reloaded in about... What is that? A third of the time? So that's 200 seconds. Oh, now you smoke up? Just as I shoot? Whose torpedoes are those? None of the ones from the Slava Rossi. Uh, Lion, continue your turn. It was more an accident than an intention to be turning to port, but I don't mind considering this is coming in. And there's more. Lovely. Gotta keep life interesting. Shit, you're getting hit. DD is slowly being whittled down. I still have 3,000 rounds. I should be fine on the 5 inch. There's the wounded Almas. What's your chance to pen? 23%. Set a course for the Almas. I want to see if I can peck the Almas down to below 50%. Because then I get 10 points, which puts me at 5 points, instead of the uh, currently minus 5 that I currently have. That's a lot of currently's in one sentence. No, 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 you don't have to make a massive turn. As many as smoke up, engage the Olmaz. The little destroyer that could. Hopefully. Chance to pen. Fairly good. 49%. Crap, she 
She's taking a few more hits. That's six inch. Five inch? From the DD. Really? And I also got hit by the eight inch on the heavy cruiser. Great. That's problematic. Stroini has re... Yeah, she's reloaded her torpedoes. So it's pretty much a matter of time before those come my way. 51%. Nice work. Heavy damage against the Pamiet Mercuria. 49%. Nobody fire at that light cruiser. She has to survive. Um, the Mercuria is flooding. Main guns on the Slavarossi. Chance to pen, 96%. Yeah. Again, I'm hoping for an overpen. Secondary armament still on the destroyer. No, it's on the heavy cruiser. Hold on. It should be on the destroy me. The shells are going everywhere except where I want them to go. Oh no, Tasmania. I need to keep her alive because she's quite valuable in that just little pecking away role. Is that limping cruiser? Here. She's still launching, or not so much launching, but she's still firing. And the Tasmania seems to be taking the brunt of it. Thankfully, Tasmania has not suffered any kind of flooding or any engine damage as of right now. So she's not slowed down whatsoever. She's still doing 32 knots. But yeah, her damage is making it so that she cannot acquire her 41 knots anymore. Pedo in the water. This guy has to go. We can probably survive another shot. But I'd rather not test that theory too much. Because if I do and I actually start flooding entirely on the lion, then the scenario is lost. Hard to starboard. This is going to be a problem. No, this one's fine. These ones are going to be a problem. Come on, 5 inch. Rotor midships. Slightly. Rotor emit. Steady as she goes. Ah, fuck. Sorry. I did take a hit. I thought I could sort of swing the stern out. Didn't work. You, tell me where your launchers are. Emit ships. Your maneuvers are not making it very easy for you to get those weapons to bear. Oh shit, the Slavarossi is going down. No, 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 no. The line's too effective. Survive. Shit. That's another minus five. Oh dear. Here come the torpedoes. I'm going to get pincer between the torpedoes here and here. Which is the bigger one? 20 inch? 21 inch. I'd rather take the 20 inch from the DD than the 21 inch from the light cruiser. Set main armament. Foyer Voda. Oh god, stop killing cruisers! Oh no. 
This is not going to help for the alliance between the British and the Russians. And the lion's going to get torpedoed again. Unless I can pull some sort of rabbit out of a hat. This one, I don't like this one. Don't. Don't. Lion. We're... We're good. Okay. Jesus. So that's three minus fives so far. And one light cruiser was actually allowed to survive. She's over there, the Olmaz. Um, Pemi at Mercuria is flooding. Secondaries on there, mains on the Rinda. I'm trying to keep them alive desperately, but the game just won't let these things live. All the light cruisers are getting too close. What's Tasmania doing? Oh, she's alright. 68%. Any more surprises in the water? You'd think that the DD would try it, but they're not. Trying to very carefully peck away at this light cruiser with the secondaries. What I'm very concerned with is that the Rinda is going to take a mouthful of 15 inch shells and just immediately blow up. That seems to be the trend with these Russian ships. That's not what I want. Flooding. Switch secondaries. I don't want you to flood. I just want you neutral neutralized-ish. Lion so far has taken <laughs> seven and a half thousand shots that have been fired at her. She took 960 hits. Fortunately, it's all six inch and small stuff. Sixty-one. Don't kill her. Let's switch the secondary fire. I hope that these guys have an anti-flooding system. I have anti-flood one. That's not really going to help. So here's the thing, it's like you only have a fly swatter and you're trying to keep the fly alive, you're just trying to stun the fly, but <laughs> it's very hard not to kill the fly on impact. A 15 inch gun doesn't have a stun setting, shall we say. Oh no, if I hit the ship again, she's gonna flood again. Pamia at Mercuria. I'd say she's disabled due to all of the flooding. But the scenario says it should be half health. So I'm interpret. Oh, there we go, she's flooding again. I'm interp interpreting half health as having 50% structural integrity. Oh, there goes the Rinda. She just took flooding as well. New target is the Terek. Secondaries are still in the Mercuria. She's fighting her flooding. 58% structural integrity. Oh no, 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 no. We're gonna have to give this girl some time to pump out all that water. She has a few co flooded compartments. Rinda is also falling back again due to a lot of flooding. Maybe I can consider flooded ships as disabled. Because they're... They're salvageable. But I'd say that they're not necessarily combat effective. So that would mean I have disabled three light cruisers. 
I sunk two light cruisers and a heavy. Now, that means that I have a minus 15 and a plus 30. So I have a score of 15. If I want to win this, I'm going to have to have a score of 40. So I would have to disable... No, I can't get there. I would have to disable the Terek and the Zemchuk. I can't do that. Even if I do, then it's going to put me at 25, 35 points, not 40. Oh no. Were we even firing at the Rinda? No, the Rinda just happened to be in the way. Great. This is why I don't use tight formations myself. If the enemy misses one of your ships, they can still hit the other one that's seemingly quite close to it. Imagine how quickly the Lion could have sunk this fleet if she had a good fire control system and a radar. It would have been a massacre. I would have finished off these light cruisers pretty quick. I think those 5 inch guns would be firing at an accuracy of about 8% and the main gun somewhere in the range of 6 to 7. Actually the secondary is probably a bit higher than that. Alright, I'll see if I can disable the Terek and the Zemchuk. Okay, you don't have any torpedoes left. You do. We've still got that DD back there as well. Rinda still has a few torpedoes and the Terek does too, but with the Pamiette Mercuria in the way, I think that she won't do it. She'll probably not torpedo me. Fuck me. See, again. I'm not trying to hit the DD. The main weapons and the secondary weapons are trained on the Terek. But the Stroini is so close that she's just getting hit. And the whole of that ship is burning and flooding. And she just has nowhere to go. She's gone. Bye-bye. At least that's not going to cost me any points. Sinking of DDs is permitted. Uh, main ammo, or main armament Zemchuk. Secondary, Terek. Let's see if I can disable them without killing them. If I can, great. I'm going to call it a day right there. This has to be one of the most challenging scenarios that I've seen so far. At least it's it's not necessarily challenging in the way that you have to build a complex ship. Or in the way that you have to do something very, very difficult. Um, in the, the sense of formations or, or sink X amount of ships. You have to work with a deadly weapon system and try to keep the enemy alive. So it's trying to flip the whole game mechanics on its head. And that's something I really appreciate. Because this is forcing me to think outside the box. Somebody was saying, oh, can you make another Yamato build? That's, that's the box. That's the basics. I don't want that. I like the variation. Using a game or a system to have it do something different, that's what I find interesting. This is what I don't find interesting. Two torpedoes coming my way. With virtually no chance that I'm going to avoid the second thing. With a damaged rudder. She's going to eat another torpedo. Which... Actually, see, this is another one of those things. This is actually good for me. Because the lower the accuracy on my ship, the less likely I am to hit those guys. Which, in this case, I actually kind of appreciate. Hold on, is that going to miss? Yeah, that missed. Okay, good. Um, this Terek ship is very slowly taking damage. I could throw the line into a turn. And that's one of the systems, or one of the ways that I was considering doing it. Just throw the ship flat out into a turn. And, oh. 
And by doing that, you make sure that your guns are not on target. I don't disable the guns, I just make sure the guns aren't on target. And that that way they cannot hurt the enemy warships. The enemy warships, however, have absolutely no problem hurting me. Here comes another torpedo. And by the way, I think my time has expired. I set for myself an hour limit. Not necessarily that that is what the developer of the scenario had in mind. But... Um, I'd say the time has passed. Oops. Is that... That was just a flat-out pen? No, there we go. Overpen, overpen, overpen. That's what I wanted to see. Okay, torpedo's harmless. Zemchuk is falling. No! You're supposed to fall back. You're not supposed to sink. Zemchuk. Alright, she's not flooding anymore. But she is dead in the way between myself... And my target. I'm gonna angle away from these ships to make sure that I don't actually have the main bow battery available. So that I just fire fewer guns at the target. That was shitty. Okay, so we're gonna consider Zemchuk disabled. One, two, three, four... Five disabled cruisers. Well, four currently. So, it was a minus 15. Plus a 50. Yeah, it's not going to be good enough. She's flooding. Stop torpedoing me, damn it. There's a minus 15 plus uh, 50. That's 35 points. That means I failed the scenario. better that I start missing my shots right now. Uh, main guns. Target the Rinda. I'm trying to whittle this thing down with the secondaries and order the main batteries to just be turning so they're not actually firing at a target. Again, trying to think outside of the box. <clears throat> Torpedoes passing by. That gun turret is almost on target. Oh, that was a 15% chance to hit. I'm sorry. Sorry, that was not really the plan. It really wasn't. I didn't mean to actually hit you. <clears throat> Just meant to slow you down a bit. Stop shooting. Normally, I bitch about my guns not being accurate enough. Now I'm bitching about them being too accurate. Uh-oh. Lion. Try to get that rudder to the other side. Tarek, 51%. When she goes below 49, I'm calling it. Or below 50, rather. Lion. You see that torpedo. 50. Don't kill it. Don't. Ooh, 13% chance to hit. Oh, thank god that missed. That's a sentence that I don't usually <laughs> utter when situations like these occur. Look at this. This just keeps happening. These torpedoes just. Is that a flying fish? What the hell was that? I have seen some stuff in my day in this game, but I have not yet seen torpedoes outside of the water. That is a new occurrence. Yeah, it's just a wave pattern, I guess. Forty-eight percent. 
<laughs> I could stop it now, but I really want to see what that salvo does. If it kills the Almaz, <laughs> it's not going to be good. Oh, okay, finally. Right. So, I failed the scenario. I could not get 40 points. Simply because I sunk too many ships. I sunk too many of their cruisers. And I don't know what else I could have done really different. Because it was just a 15 inch shell that pretty much instantly evaporated one of those ships. It just... It didn't have a chance to repair. It was just gone. Instantly. Anyway, very, very interesting scenario. Again, a scenario where I think outside the box is fantastic. And those are the scenarios that um, if I find them among the 400 plus scenarios that I have now, if I find them, they always draw my attention and that's the ones that I go for. So that's my sort of selection filter outside the box. Darcy C, thank you for the scenario, very creative. Um, and I look forward to seeing further scenarios from you guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I shall catch you guys soon for another video.